Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. We're going to talk now about the open carbonate system. So let's say a few words about this first of all. The open carbonate system uh, is the most important acid base system in the environment by far. Uh, it gives rise to the balance of carbon dioxide in the system and uh, the dissolved H carbonate ions in the water affect the fertility of the system. Fertility, uh, the water has organic components in it and these organic components can be used by living organisms to build themselves, for example. So here's a picture of this. We have uh, CO2 gas in the atmosphere exerting one atmosphere pressure, causing a dissolving of H2CO3. The H2CO3 um, may be in equilibrium with calcium carbonate deposits here and it at deeper uh, systems there may be some reactions with bicarbonate. It's assumed in the simple case we can model it by using an equilibrium with atmospheric CO2. In the more complicated molecules which are used in climate modelling they take into account way way more stuff and there's a lot more data measured and it's really carefully done, unbelievably carefully done. But let's look at the simple stuff here. Um, to study the open carbonate system, we need Henry's law. What's that? The solubility of a gas in a liquid is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in contact with the liquid. So here's Henry's law. We have a gas in equilibrium with the liquid. If we squash the gas down, more of the gas goes into the solution. How much more goes into the solution? Well, it's directly proportional to the pressure that you impose on the gas above the liquid. That's Henry's law, which is just here. The amount of dissolved H2CO3, or sometimes concentration of CO2 aqueous, it's called, as was in the previous graphs, is proportional to the pressure, partial pressure of the gas above the liquid. And what's the proportionality constant? That's called the Henry's constant. Um, actually, that's just uh, an equilibrium constant, if you think about it, for the reaction involving a concentration and a pressure. Pressure is also a measure of concentration. PV equals nRT, which means that P equals N on V times RT. N on V is the concentration, so P is directly proportional to concentration. The proportionality factor is RT. Right, let's look at the carbonate, open carbonate system and look at KH values uh, at different temperatures because equilibrium constants and KH, the Henry's constant, is an equilibrium constant. So here's the temperature, uh, 25 degrees and 10 degrees and the constants are in fresh water are 10 to the minus 1.47 at 25 and 10 to the minus 1.27 at 10. So what does that say? As the temperature rises, uh, there is less carbon dioxide getting dissolved into the water because 10 to the 1, this is a bigger number, meaning there's more zeros in this one, this is less zeros. So increased temperature means less gas in the solution. You know that. If you heat up some coke, all the bubbles are going to come out of it, right? That's all that's saying. And in seawater, it's different again. In fact, the solubility of CO2 in seawater uh, is even less than in fresh water. That's perhaps not so su surprising. Um, the seawater has already stuff dissolved in it and if it's already got stuff dissolved in it, it's perhaps a little bit understandable that not as much CO2 can get into it because there's already salt in there. Fine, but look, it's not that much. It's much less smaller. The temperature dependence is much more dependent much more significant than the salinity dependence. Okay, so that... <laughs> okay, so the amount of CO2 dissolved in the water depends on temperature and that means we have to consider the temperature of the water. So here's a particular kind of case. Summer, autumn, spring and winter. In summer there's a lot of sun so the top layer of water gets pretty hot then it cools down in this region here this is called the thermocline where the temperature goes lower and then in the bottom part of the water we have the hyperlimnion 
And right at the bottom we have the muck and goo, and the mud at the bottom, that's called the benthos. The top layer is called the epilimnion. Epi means surface in Greek. So there are stratified layers of temperature in the open uh, water system, and so that will affect the amount of carbonate that's dissolving because of the Henry's constant. At fall or spring, there's a bit of turbulence in the system, and so there's a lot of change of temperature, and these more or less stable layers start to change around. In winter, uh, if there's ice forming, uh, most of the liquid becomes hyperlimnion. There isn't much of a temperature difference. Most of it's very close to uh, zero degrees, but there may be a surface layer a very few degrees warmer. So we see a much decreased thermocline and epilimnion, and uh, not much uh, uh, turbulence uh, because of the ice layer. Now, uh, when the temperature is lower, reaction rates are slower. So that means that um, we can't always use equilibrium calculations when we have cold water. Likewise, if we just do equilibrium calculations and we don't take into account turbulence in our models, that's not going to work either. And the other thing that stuffs us up when working about dissolved CO2 is living organisms, because living organisms actually produce uh, a lot of there's a lot of them, and they're microscopic, and uh, most of the oxygen and CO2 uptake in the atmosphere is produced by microscopic organisms via photosynthesis, and this photosynthesis produces CO2. Um, so in the surface layers, uh, uh, in the surface layers, photosynthesis takes CO2 from the atmosphere or the water, surface water combines it with water to form um, basically living material, which is a carbohydrate. Uh, it's often represented by CH2O, because actually, if you want to write a human being down, its chemical formula would more or less be CH2O, plus a few extra things, which are pretty much negligible. Um, so mostly water with a bit of carbon, is what that's saying, times N. And if you balance this equation, it's CH2O N plus N oxygen. That's photosynthesis. See, production of oxygen plus carbohydrate. Now, when the living organisms die, they go down to the bottom and they die in the benthos. And in the benthos, there are also living organisms which use up oxygen and we have respiration or biodegradation. So there the oxygen recombines with the dead goo to form back CO2. So we have an anoxic atmosphere in the benthos because we're using up oxygen and we're producing carbon dioxide and H2O at the bottom. So we might see more carbon dioxide at the bottom and more oxygen at the top. So all of these effects, turbulence, convection, seasons, temperature and photosynthesis conspire to change uh, the CO2 concentrations and therefore the acidity in the open carbonate system. Right, having said all that, Let's forget it all. Let's forget it and let's simplify the whole problem and do it via chemistry and treat the open system just as a system with Henry's law. The open system now differs from the closed system uh, in that H2CO3 star, which is, we can call that dissolved H2CO, is constant. Uh, dissolved CO2, we can call that that's constant, i.e. the latter is in equilibrium with the atmosphere and it never gets used up. Okay. So um, here we have uh, the particular system, CO2 gas in equilibrium in water, but there's the K constant to dissolved H2CO3. And then that's in equilibrium with bicarbonate, which is in equilibrium with CO3 two minus. What happens if we use up some of this? Well, that will cause more of this guy to dissociate. That will cause more of this guy to dissociate and that will cause more CO2 to dissociate. That's what I mean by the H2CO3 being roughly constant in the open carbonate system. That was not the case in the closed system because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't exposed to the atmosphere. And this is the atmospheric equilibrium here, the gas in equilibrium with the dissolved H2O plus CO2, which we write as H2CO3 over here. Now, the total uh, uh, carbon concentration, the total system concentration, we can say the total carbonate 
concentration is the sum of all of these quantities here. All of these quantities have one unit of carbonate or one carbon in them. So this is something that's interesting to calculate. You can measure it by ICP, for example, through the carbon. Um, the ionic strength increases strongly with added OH. Why do I say that? Well, uh, as it becomes more basic, as we add more basic, we get more carbonate in the system. As we get more carbonate double minus, that causes more shielding of any salts. So the ionic strength increases strongly with added OH, and that means that will affect equilibrium constants very strongly. So when we start going away from systems near uh, freshwater systems towards anoxic sy systems or very acidic systems, uh, equilibrium calculations may not work. 